Greetings, brothers and sisters. So this is the state of CNN and <laughs> modern American media. So there's this guy, Ben Swan. Most of you, I think, know who he is. He had this show called Reality Check, right? And um, Ben Swan fired after an attempt to bring back Reality Check, right? So this is a, a guy who plugged into the truther narratives and made them local mainstream uh, media, right? Here's a guy who, um, you know, he wasn't a truther like we think about truthers, but he had some like local TV show that started featuring his reality check stuff. And then he had some private thing, maybe on Facebook. I don't know what it was. I really didn't watch him, but I knew of him. And, you know, I watched this one thing he did here on the pizza thing. And so this has been around for a number of years, probably like 10 years. He's done this thing called Reality Check. The FDA continues to push to convince the DEA to make Kratom a Schedule One drug. But now a new white paper concludes that the FDA's research is nothing more than junk science. Let's give it a reality check. So I'm um, in the uh, this reality check thing. It's got the hair. <laughs> And that's uh, the semi suit. And so he was somebody who was trying to take truther narratives and make them into some sort of mainstream gig for himself, right? So, not, you know, necessarily an original truther, but somebody who, you know, at least was consistent with the truther ideologies, right? Somehow I think he made it on Russia today. You know, he had various versions of this program, I just started to look it up because I'm going to show you how CNN has knocked them off. Here's a question for you. When the coronavirus vaccine becomes available, do you plan to take it? Some of you watching will say, absolutely, yes. Others will say, you're not sure. And still others will say, absolutely not. There's no way. Well, the truth is, for those of you who are unsure or those of you who say no, Yale University is working on a study to make sure... So this is his thing, right? So... Ben Swan and Reality Check. So then I noticed that CNN had this guy, John Avalon. I crap you not, right? And he has his own version of this show called Reality Check. Party consumed by fair John Avalon, Reality Check here. <laughs> so they've knocked off Ben Swan, who is a knockoff of truthers, right? Party consumed by fear, John Avalon, John Avalon, calls out Republicans. There was once a fear that took over the Republican Party in the nation. It was spread by a bullying demagogue who accused his opponents of being traitors and communists. He leveled fact-free attacks and said he represented Americanism with its sleeves up. His supporters embraced a cult of personality drenched in conspiracy theories, sure that God was on their side. Drenched in conspiracy theories, right? <laughs> it was drenched in conspiracy theories. Their intensity, their crushing certainty, intimidated most politicians into silence. They didn't want the trouble of being attacked by the party's activist base. They knew it was wrong, but worried that if they told the truth, they could lose a primary election. But one woman decided to speak up. Her name was Margaret Chase Smith, the first woman popularly elected to the U.S. Senate. The time was 19... This guy's giving you the reality check here, right? The Reality Check by John Avalon. And I saw this other video that was recommended by YouTube on my mobile app. Hey, all, I'm John Avalon, and this is Reality Check on the Extremist Beat. On the Extremist Beat. You want to understand how extremist politics and conspiracy theories have become mainstreamed in America? Extremist politics and conspiracy theories. We've got to look at the rise of hyper-partisan media and how the most divisive messages have been... It's all there. It's just one side, hyper-partisan. It's Fox News. It's Newsmax. It's OAN. Like, there's no CNN or MSNBC. They're not partisan at all. <laughs> you know, they're the only... These are the only... The right wing is the only ones that are hyper-partisan. Amplified via algorithms that profit off polarization. This didn't happen overnight. But its effect has twisted the American mind. Take it's twisted the American mind. Taking us way off center, making audience... Look at how fake this guy is, right? He's just, 
You know, I mean, he's just a a Ben Swan knockoff, and like he's just so fake, like everyone else over at CNN. This is addicted to anger, anxiety, and resentment, and all this has a real world impact. Get this: a 2019 Pew survey found that 73 percent of Americans believe that Republicans and Democrats cannot agree on basic facts. Basic facts that they give you every day at CNN, right? So I was watching this while I was, you know, sick. I um, bookmarked it for later, and I wanted to cover it when I came back and was healthier. I've known about this guy for a while, right? And CNN is admitting, not just CNN, because, you know, Tucker Carlson has ripped off a lot of our narratives and not just, you know, the way that we view the world, the lens in which people in the so-called truth community view the world. Ben Swan ripped it off, I don't know, like 10 years ago, and now CNN ripped off Ben Swan's whole, I mean, even his name, right? You know, when my sister was in elementary school, my older sister, she um, was called up, or the teacher said, are there two Kathy Romanos in the <laughs> In the class, somebody had, like some dope had copied her complete paper and then had copied her name. <laughs> some kid in her class, you know, who was uh, cheating off of her. And that's how bad CNN is. It's, uh, you know, it's like they're turning their their belly, you know, like a dog is, you know, rolls over and turns on its belly and pees on itself a little bit so it's so scared or whatever. whatever. Like they're admitting they have no creativity they don't know how to connect to their audience on their own. So they're hijacking one of these sort of truther. So you know, the closest thing they, get, they can get to a truther type of TV show format, calling it reality check. But it's heavy duty on conspiracy theories. And, you know, they've reversed it, right, where they're saying conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists, people who have alternative views, are the real problem. And they say it over and over again. The politicians say it. Jimmy Kimmel says it. I mean, I just did a, a video that included Jimmy Kimmel. And you see this again. Tucker Carlson's doing it. You have all these people who are, you know, ripping off stuff from the truth community because it's more truthful and it's more compelling and people believe it more and they believe it on a deeper level than this crap that they've been force feeding people for a while. But think about what CNN's saying. By They have that guy, Donny O'Sullivan. I just did a thing on Hillary Clinton saying that disinformation, and this guy's saying the same thing, that logarithms are you know, being used to exploit people's conspiratorial type of ideology. And yet at the same time, Facebook and YouTube and Google and you know Twitter are all um, you know, Instagram and Twitter are all censoring so-called truthers, right? Because their the orientation, their leanings and politics and everything else is this liberal progressive agenda. And these guys are all claiming that conspiracy theorists are the, you know, the real enemies, right? In fact, Jimmy Kimmel just said that in a video I did today where he talked about people doing their own research are the real enemies. Like he literally said those words. And so what's important to know about this is that these guys all have, you know, a stranglehold on the media. They get social media to do their bidding and promote their crap. I mean, YouTube has algorithms promoting so-called authoritarian news, and nobody wants to watch it, right? You go to search for something that you're hoping to find truth or, you know, YouTube, you know, uh, outcome in your search. And it gives you CNN and MSNBC and sometimes Fox and crap like that, right? So they're not, you know, on the side of the so-called truth movement. And the truth movement has no money. Like, where's the big corporations that are behind truthers, that are running ads, right? I mean, it's difficult to get advertisements, even though this is very popular content. Because the people that control the money and control the power, they don't want these more truthful narratives out there. And so it's, you know, all this pressure on the various, um, you know, social media agencies and all the rest of it. Where's the, the news networks that are uh, doing real truth or stuff, not some kind of knockoff, not some kind of 
left, right, you know, leaning hard to the right or the left, usually the right, and calling it truth or stuff. It's not, right? There's no, there's no powers that be out there. And yet they're saying the big, you know, people to fear are people who are doing their own research and using critical thinking skills and not accepting the system what the beast is giving them, right? When they have all the power. Look at the power and money that's behind CNN. But with all that power and money, they can't make themselves not suck. I mean, they're not capable of not sucking, right? All they can do is suck. <laughs> so nobody wants to watch it. I mean, go in the airport, CNN's on, right? I mean, they, they have all these places where you're basically forced to watch it. And every, you know, cable news and direct TV and now YouTube TV and all these other online applications have CNN apps, right? CNN has their own YouTube channel as well. And yet nobody wants to watch it. It's available everywhere. They can't give it away. And MSNBC and, you know, to a lesser extent, Fox. Fox still has an audience. But the people are watching mainstream news. I mean, I look at the news and I'm like, who could really watch this? Like, how could you sit there and watch it? I mean, I say it every time I, I look at it. It's unwatchable. You know, they just fired Chris Cuomo's and they covered some of these other things today, you know, that go along with it. And they just don't have an audience because it sucks so bad. Like, it just really sucks. The people suck. Their condition sucks. And they're not real journalists. They are told by, like, the CIA or some sort of, you know, intelligence community, governmental liaison. And by their corporate leaders and all these guys, you know, the money that be, the powers that be that's behind them, Disney and you know, all these big corporate entities what to say, what their perspective is. They know what it is. They know what they're supposed to say. Like they don't have a journalistic moment where they're an individual person doing research into a story and, you know, something bothers them about the subject, right? The hypocrisy, the lies, right? The CIA lies, the corporate lies, the bank lies, the government lies, whatever it might be. And they go out there and they do the research. They come up with a story and they go to their producers and they put it on air, that doesn't happen, right? They all know what they're supposed to say, and they say it. They're all shills. I mean, that movie Network years ago, was it Network or um, Broadcast News, where William Hurt was basically a male model who was good at reading and keeping his suit straight, if you saw that movie. And there's uh, you know, another reporter there who isn't as polished, but he you know, uncovers this guy who cries on cue and all this stuff. And it's just a performance, right? They're just actors. They go out there and they read whatever script they're given. They don't have a conscience. They don't have any kind of um, internalistic, you know, journalistic integrity, right? Some internal journalistic integrity. And they got away with it for a while because it's the only game in town. But then the media, uh, the internet took off. And now they're, you know, they're competing against real people. Real people who can do research and think for themselves. And the compelling narratives that have come out of the truth community are destroying their viewership, their audience, right? Like they have nothing. And so now they're trying to co-opt these, you know, <laughs> these truther narratives in one way or another and turn them on upside down and make the people who are, you know, individual people who are out there just telling the truth or to the best of their ability with no power and no money behind them. But somehow they're the enemy of the state. They're the enemy. They're the people that are going to bring everything down, right? The so-called conspiracy theorists. And I've talked about this in you know past videos. If you go to every TV show or movies or you know even most video games, there's a conspiracy in them, right? There's some sort of conspiracy at the center of pretty much all entertainment, and especially anything that's you know, political in nature. And I mean, go to like movies like E.T. There's a conspiracy. The government's trying to capture E.T. You know, Close Encounters. These are Steven Spielberg movies. There's almost always a governmental conspiracy and cover up in any of these shows and TV shows and movies. You, you know, I was going through them and I, you know, I had a bunch of images. I'll put them somewhere in this video here and I was just finding any movie I had just recently seen and one after another there's some sort of conspiracy there and you know getting to the bottom of the conspiracy is very compelling to people and they know that right 
except they have real conspiracies that they don't want want you to know, the big ones, right? Starting with the Federal Reserve and how a private bank became control of the American economy. And now there's these private banks in every country around the globe controlling this debt-based economy. And then there's all these other type of conspiracies. The Boston Tea Party was a conspiracy, right? There's all these conspiracies throughout history, conspiring people to defraud other people or governmental conspiracies. It's a big part of human nature because human beings will conspire. They'll conspire to get more than their, you know, the people they're competing with. We live in a comp- competitive world and human beings lie and cheat to get whatever they want, right? To get over on their fellow human beings. That's a part of human nature. And it's a big part of human nature. And so for them to deny these conspiracies exist when it's at the centerpiece of pretty much everything, every big economic system, every big economic movement, every big whatever it is, social movement, there's some sort of conspiracies. And you have agencies, the CIA, the FBI, I mean, all these agencies that are out there that are supposed to get to the bottom of conspiracies, but these you know, CIA creates conspiracies, FBI, these other intelligence agencies, they're spying on people, which is a form of a conspiracy, using information, withholding information, putting out disinformation, putting out psychological operations, which are also conspiratorial in nature, right? And then you have the conspiracies. I mean, just very recently, we had the opioid epidemic where pharmaceutical companies design these, you know, designer opioids that they say weren't addictive, but they were. They got doctors to peddle them, and they created, you know, a a, a worldwide and, you know, a countrywide opioid addiction on heroin, basically, right? They were were drug dealers. And 300,000 Americans died at least, lives were ruined. You know, $5 billion was, uh, $10 billion was made by the Sackler family, and $5 billion went to taxes. They walked away scot-free. So did all these other, you know, various people, you know, some doctors went to jail, but for the most part, you know, it was a very successful conspiracy that, you know, destroyed lives and created addictions and was run by the medical model. And so these things exist time and time again, people get caught, nothing's ever done, you know, the real, I mean, whatever it is, right? Microsoft had all these conspiracies, Bill Gates, he got sued. But the amount of money that they made compared to what they had to pay back was a fraction, a slap on the wrist. And so these conspiracies and these, you know, criminal organizations that get the backing of the government and these agencies and they behave badly, they make lots of money and they get away with it. And so over time with the, you know, onset of the Internet, people started to look into all of this crap, all of this illegal crap that is you know, white collar crime, it's not even really crime because they get away with it, right, above the law. And people who started to do that and find these narratives became a threat to the powers that be. And so they came up with this term conspiracy theorists and are blaming you, even though they're the criminals, right? Even though they're the people who are, you know, responsible for all of this, you know, evil stuff. And this is their new you know, this is their game-winning strategy to, you know, understand all the evil that they do and project it on people who are saying, hey, look at the evil that you guys are doing. We're not doing the evil. You're doing the evil. You're the evil conspiracy theorists. You're the conspiracy theorists that are doing all the evil, even though we have all the money and we have all the crime, right? (laughs) We're the ones who are in control of everything. You guys who are telling us that we're evil, no, you're evil. We're not evil. You're evil, right? It's just, you know, demonic and and ungodly and, you know, all these things. See, the problem behind all of this, which I keep on coming back to, is that this system is insolvent. Economically, it's insolvent, but on a moral level, on a, you know, character level, on a, you know, who you are as a human being, it's insolvent because it's a, you know, debauched system. It's degraded and it it's about materialistic, uh, pleasure, you know, stimulation and disconnected from your true purpose and disconnecting from God and nature and the family and all the things that are there to support any species, right? 
Like I say this all the time, lions live in prides and fish live in schools and humans live in families. We have a system, a natural system in which if you, you know, remain in the parameters of behavior in that system, you're going to function on a natural level and be supported by God, right? You're going to be within the range of acceptable behaviors and attitudes. But if you start to deviate away from that in an ego-based system, where you start making decisions outside the natural system, the divine system, which is what's happening, and you become more and more of an abomination as a species, then you're no longer living the way you were designed to live. It's like, you know, animals in a zoo cage, right? They lose the essence of what makes them the animals that they are, right? And so they become, you know, something else, right? Something that's unnatural and, you know, unholy. And that's what's happened with the human species in our system. And so now it's just, you know, it feeds on lies and deception to keep it going and our collective need, because we're all 100% dependent on this demonic system. And that's where all this stuff's coming from. But now that there's more truth emerging and people can hear, you know, alternative explanations to what's so-called reality, right? Reality check. I mean, that's what this thing, you know, reality check with Ben Swan was knocking off the truth community, going against mainstream media, and then CNN co-opting it, right? This is, you know, these guys are just crazy, right? Well, not as crazy as you. Like, you know, we may be crazy, but you guys, you know, like you're on a whole different level because you're supporting something that's an abomination that goes away from God. And, you you know, that's all you can do, right? And you can't think for yourselves. You can't do anything, you know, in terms of a heart-based human approach where your conscience and your, you know, your integrity make you, behave, make you force you to go against the powers that be. You're not willing to do that, right? You wouldn't have a job if you did, or even worse, they take you out, you know, altogether. And so this is where they are, right? They're lower than the lowest, and they'll never be able to embrace God and never be able to, at least in this life, right? And they won't be able to, you know, face the truth about themselves and be honest, you know, be honest about our system. I mean, that's the one thing they could do. Just admit to it, right? Systems collapsing, it's insolvent. What are we going to do? Like, you know, the world that we know is eroding right in front of us, a system we're 100% dependent on. What are we going to do? What can we do to, you know, survive this as best as we can? They're just trying to grab on more power and control for themselves as the system collapses, and that's not going to work. You know, it's a failed, I mean, we know what happens when the system collapses. They all shrivel up and die like, you know, I said the wicked witch of the West when she was doused by water, right? I'm melting, you know? (laughs) They're all melting right in front of us. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.